Hey guys, it's Andrew with GY6 Vids. Ever since I've done the how to throw an axe, how to throw a knife video, I'm getting a lot of requests to do an old Casualty Carl ballistics dummy test. I'm guessing that you all want to know how much penetration you're going to get on, say, a throwing tomahawk or a throwing knife. So in this video, that's what we're going to be doing. Why not? All right, mosling up bayonet versus Casualty Carl. Now what a lot of people don't understand is ballistics gel isn't meant to be an exact representation of a target or human flesh or you know an animal's flesh. It's meant to be a go-to analog to do testing to see the penetration of say projectiles in the firearm or a blade in this case. I use the same type of gel, cook the same way, the same temperature, in the same molds every time. So every time I do a test, if I compare something later in the future, you can compare the results back to back to back. Ballistics gel is more closely representing dense muscle tissue. So when you touch yourself, you have bones and everything else too in your system. Well, that's true, and we're gonna be using pork ribs today, but you also have to realize in your gut and underneath your ribs and just past your ribs, it's very gooey and mushy, much less than this. I mean, I can take this DMO knife and stick casually Carl in the head and it bounces right out. But if I were to do that to my stomach or someone else, I guarantee you it's not gonna be bouncing out anytime soon. So keep that in mind when you're watching the test. If we do get solid penetration and it does get a good stick, realize if that hit anywhere in your ribs, it's most likely gonna crack easily through ribs and then keep going into the gooey parts of your chest. But getting into the test, what we're gonna be using today are tomahawks and knives, like I said, standard little you know eBay buyers. I actually like throwing these, they're a lot of fun, but they break very easily because it's cheap metal. Then we're gonna go to the standard issue USMC K-Bar fighting knife, which is one of my favorite blades ever. You know, the history behind them is amazing, so you gotta have that in here, and I've been practicing throwing K-Bars for quite some time now, many, many years, and I've got it down. And then we get into the DMO Warrior Hawk. This thing was custom made for me by DMO Knives. You can go into the description of this video any point in time and see links to all the websites you need to go to to buy any one of these things we use today. But I wanted a good, you know, short, compact throwing tomahawk, and that's what they made for me. Then we get into another tomahawk that's a little bit higher end and multi-use. This is the OutlandEquipment.com multi-mission axe. This thing is a tank. It's made out of S7 tool steel, so it's very hard. And then we'll move into a tomahawk that's more traditional. You see these type of throwing tomahawks all over the place. Um, you can buy these for 40, 50 bucks or so on and so forth, but they're just plain Jane tomahawks. Well, a friend of mine that I hit up and saw that he was doing some seriously good work for tomahawks designed this one custom for me. I don't know if a lot of you guys recognize this, but it's the same type of vine look as Mel Gibson had in The Patriot. The last but not least, we have also the DMO Breacher. This Breacher is, I carry it on me all the time when I go backpacking or hiking in the woods, but when you throw it, it's got some weight. So we'll see what happens if it sticks. Cue the high speed, let's go. Well, it's not horrible, but you're getting only like half inch to an inch maybe of penetration, these little things. There's not a lot of weight behind it, that's probably why. So let's move with something heavier. Let's go to the K-Bar. So it's a great blade. You can hold it like this. This is like the fighting style. And then you can flip it up and throw. Ooh, that's much better. <laughs> went about here, but it also went further because you can hear it impacting the wood behind. You can hear it impacting that, that little thud. It's slightly bent. I'm gonna have to contact K-Bar because these things aren't supposed to do that. But nice thing is you always bend them back. <laughs> Let's move on to the DMO Breacher, which has got more weight behind it. It's shorter, obviously, but it's definitely got more weight. It's not as pointy, so we'll see how that bluntness will affect its penetration. If anything, this would hurt like heck just because of the weight. So let's get into that. Let's throw that key bar out of the way.
the kinetic energy of the DMO breacher is carrying itself in there very hard. You can see the high speed, the jiggle, the whole gel block. If it wasn't for stopping there, it would probably keep going. They have a larger blade called the Brute, which is much longer, would be devastating because there's a lot of weight behind this metal. But let's get into the Tomahawks. That sun is being a pain in the neck and covering up casually. Carl is coming behind a tree. Well, time to pack up all the crap and come back tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Welcome to the next day. Really short for you guys, a lot of work for us. <laughs> and it's time to chuck the DMO Warrior Hawk at Casualty Carl's chest to see what the damage is. All right, Casualty Carl. Oh! All right, well, the Warrior Hawk stuck all the way up until it hit the handle or the base of the blade itself. So it didn't allow it to go any further. It kind of stuck right here. You're looking at a very heavy object impacting you at a very high rate of speed, and it's definitely gonna crack through ribs, and we're probably gonna see that here shortly. Uh, but let's put this to the side for right now. The nice thing about DMO blades is they're tough as nails. You can throw them wherever you want. But let's get into more traditional now. This is that standard tomahawk look you're used to seeing. Got a little bit longer length than most tomahawks, but there are some, that, especially in competitions, that are much longer. Um, it just requires a little bit different hold, different throw, different style, different speed, different power. So you gotta make sure to practice with what you're gonna throw. I happen to throw a lot of different types of stuff, so you gotta practice with each one differently. I'm pumped, I can't wait to see this. Here we go. Oh, just over its shoulder. <laughs> Let's just pull that out. Yeah, it uh, it went clean through his shoulder. Just hitting a little high. Let's go a little bit lower. Oh. actually sliced into the back of the gel to where it opened up the back of the gel and impacted the cardboard and the wood behind it. It wiggles itself back out, um, but you can still see the temporary wound channel where it originally was until it shifted backwards. You'll see it in the high speed that it kind of goes in and then gets wobbled back out. I'm sure you're gonna see the kinetic energy that these tomahawks actually hold. Um, incredible amount of power. But let's put the traditional tomahawk to the side and go into another tomahawk this one is the OutlandEquipment.com multi-mission axe. This thing has got more weight to it and it's made of S7 tool steel. A little bit harder to throw because you do have this seat belt cutter at the bottom and it comes off your hand kind of awkwardly. All right, Casually Carl, let's see what happens. Oh boy. Here we go. Oh. It impacted and you can see the impact point on the cardboard um, and it's splitting up through its head but it's once again pushed back out because of the gel collapsing on itself and that little air pocket pushing it back out but it definitely went all the way through and impacted the back side of the gel into the wood into the cardboard ow so let's get this guy out of there now I know this is all well and fun and you guys are enjoying this and that was definitely awesome this has probably got the most kinetic energy on impact due to the fact it's got weight and it's got a big blade. Before we move on, I was thinking about it and in the comment section of uh, the how to throw a tomahawk, how to throw a knife video, I had tons of fans wanting me to do, you know, can you throw this, can you throw that? Pretty much anything with a pointy end on it or a sharp end on it, uh, you can throw. You just gotta get used to the rotation and where to hold it properly. If there's any snagging points in your hand, kind of like the end of the K bar, it's got that little blunt end on it, it catches your fingers and they'll throw your your throw off, so you gotta keep that in mind. But like kitchen knives and so on and so forth, you can throw them for sure. But one of the biggest things I was requested uh, to throw is, well, get out of the ground here. 
This <laughs> is a bayonet off of a Russian Mosin Nagant, and everyone was like, can you throw a bayonet? And yes, I can now. <laughs> Just had this line around. I was like, why not? All right, Mosin Nagant bayonet versus Casually Carl. Ooh, stuck a little bit and bounced out. Try it again. Here we go. Oh, in the shoulder. Yeah. This would be a good weapon for the zombies. A little head spike, or you know, make it out of wood <laughs> for the vampires. All right, take three. Oh, well, there goes my table. This should be it. I think I got it. Oh, money. All right, moving on. Let's get the ribs. That's too much fun. You know, when in doubt, use duct tape. We're starting off with the DMO Breacher, and we'll move into the Tomahawks. All right, here we go. Oh, definitely through ribs, that's for sure. Holy crap. Looks like it still went into the gel and got pushed out like before. Four inches of penetration into the gel, even after going through the ribs, which is pretty impressive. All right, both bags are leaking. Now let's go into the cape bar, see what this looks like. A little pointier, a little bit longer. All right. Ooh. Huh. All right, well, it hit slightly over-rotated, so I'll throw it again. It hit like this rather than like this, so I gotta scoot up a little bit. See what we can hit, a little bit lower. Man, those ribs are really, <laughs> they're evasive little boogers. Ah, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it. There it is. Yeah, all the way to the back. It's right on top of a rib at a slight angle going all the way through it, through the gel and impacting the back side. Because that rib's holding it in place, it's not kind of wiggling back out again, so it's staying where it initially impacted which is in the board behind it. So, knives, yes, you do not want to have a knife thrown into your chest, period. All right, dead center. Oh, yeah, that hurt. Well, it cut down and split three ribs, this rack is hanging off by a thread, and it penetrated inch and a half, two inches into the gel. Uh, kinetic energy alone, that would probably stop your heart. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you got some information out of it. Ugh, I gotta go wash this stuff off. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button below, and most of all, make sure to head over to youtube.com forward slash gy6vids and hit subscribe. It helps us a ton. Also, we have a secondary YouTube channel now, so make sure to go check that out as well. It's called GY6 Slow Mo. And once again, thank you very much for the support. Go subscribe to both our YouTube channels. Make sure to hit the like button on our videos. And until next time, I'll see you later.